Carlos. All right. Well, right. good afternoon, Shaq. Carlos, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Very well, good. indeed. Good morning here in Brazil. Yeah, sorry I was pushing a little bit because we've been ready for about 45 minutes and I didn't want to leave those okay. sheets inside. We have two uh, sheets, I'm sorry. So let me introduce the team here. Uh, we have uh, Simone Pedra working with me. Uh, we have Dr. Fonsi, so this is an honor to have him here. Uh, he was one of the pioneers in this field, as uh, you all know. We have Daniela working with us, our fellows here, Marcelo and Fabricio, and our fellows uh, down there. And our nurses tech, right? Fran and Salome. So it's a, it's a big holiday here in Brazil. So uh, nobody's working at a, uh, the hospital but us. So I have to th thank them all. And first and foremost, I, I have to thank Horst, Yushak, and you, and Mario to allow us uh, to participate in this great meeting. We have three interesting cases. Let's put up the slides, please, the slides. So We're sorry to have dragged case. you in on a holiday, Carlos. Uh, apologies yeah, for that. Yeah, look at that. No, uh, 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 next slide. Look at that. Uh, someone is missing here. One of our partners in the cath lab, Rodrigo Costa. He's having fun in Frankfurt. Probably he's in the audience having some beer. And we miss you, Rodrigo. I hope you enjoy uh, Rodrigo. the yeah. meeting there. He, he's enjoying yeah. himself here. Next slide. I can vouch for that. Okay, so this is a 43-year-old female weighing uh, 62 kilos. She had shortness of breath on exercise, the classical findings uh, of an ASD. Uh, ECG showed sinus rhythm and RVH. Next one. Chest X-ray, mild increase in cardiac size and pulmonary vascular markings. Markings and TT showed severe RV dilation and two secundum ASDs. Next slide. So these are some pictures of the previous TE that were done. We have the bicaval view showing one uh, superior ASD on the right side near the SVC and a, a, a smaller ASD on the inferior portion of the septum. The, the septum was a little bit uh, hypermobile with a little bit of aneurysm. Uh, both SDs shunting left to right. Next one. And these are uh, some uh, 3D pictures. Uh, we can see the ASDs uh, on FAS uh, from the right side. And I would like to pass it on to Simone. We have some uh, more better pictures here uh, uh, in the live case. And this case is nice because it's going to illustrate all the technical tips that Gianfranco talked about in his talk. Let's go, Simone. Hello, good morning. So uh, this is the pictures we've got today. Uh, this is the bigger ASD, the larger one, which is... No, please echo, please, on the screen. Can you show the, the, the echo, echo pictures? Echo on the screen. Yeah. Not the slide, please, guys. Echo. We echo saw pictures. Simone. That was much better, I think. Yeah. I agree, <laughs> Shaq. The echo. Okay. Can you see the echo? Not there yet. There you go. Yeah. Okay, so here. Yeah, so here we have the the... Uh, septum here is mobile, as Carlos told, and we have uh, the larger ASD, which is closer to its uh, higher one. It's uh, the higher one, and with the color flow doppling, Doppler here, um, we measured this one was about 18 millimeters, and um, here is the color Doppler. So let's move to this picture here. Uh, that shows the, the lower, the lower one, which is very close to the coronary sinus, which is here. This is the sta station valve, and we see the hole here. We measured here about 10 millimeters. This is the two uh, orthogonal planes. And 
this is the similar picture that Carlos showed. So we have here in the close to the inferior cave, a vena cave, uh, the inferior hole, and he, this is the, the higher one, the pictures here. And we measured here about 14 and 14 in this, in this view. So, Simone, uh, that and inferior this, defect yeah. approaching the coronary sinus, uh, yeah. what about the rims around it? There's obviously yeah, a clear I'll show rim some, there. I'll show you some 3D pictures. So, we have the small um, inferior rim here, and the holes are apart from each other, as you see here, so they are not close. And let's move to a 3D picture. So we have here a, a right uh, atrial view. You see here, this is the hole, the inferior one, which is very irregular. It's not uh, um, round, as you see. And the larger one here, let's move a little bit here. And here, this is, in this view here, you see the coronary sinus aorta here. And if we move um, to the left side, this is the left atrium view. Here is the smaller and here, and this is the larger one. Um, just show another picture here. Yeah, and the 29, just a sec. And we, here you can see clearly aorta here, the superior ASD, inferior. This is the coronary sinus and IVC. So it's a complex ASD, uh, two holes mainly, a mobile and thin septum, and that's what I would, li would like to show you now. So, Shaq, what would be the strategies you guys uh, would have in mind to tackle this case? Well, I'd like to hear some opinions. Pictures. We have made our mind already. Yeah, there were fantastic pictures, Carlos. Let me just pick on uh, uh, some of the uh, audience about what to do. Oliver, you're at the back there, I think. I just spotted you. Um, this is a slightly more complex than regular AS, uh, well, ASDs. What do you suggest? Well, I think that <clears throat> of concern will be what is the, the um, what sort of rim have they got between the IVC and the and the left atrium, uh, because that's getting very close to the IVC that that defect. Um, also, the eustachian valve is rather rather unusual in appearance. So, um, I would. Would, I personally would have been more comfortable having more detailed anatomical information. Well, you've got 3D pictures there. Yeah, well, um, I think if I were taking this selectively, I'd have had an MRI scan of this patient. Okay. Um, but if we're going to go, going to go into it, then um, I would uh, um, probably try and close this, the lower one first. And the guide wire will go through the lower one, preferentially anyway. Uh, so I think I'd, I would see how I get on with that one and then worry about the big one later. Dietmar? At the same time. Dietmar? Hi, my friend, Dietmar. Oh, switch the uh, microphone on, Dietmar. It's okay. Hi, Carlos and Simone. I hope you will see you next week in, in Gießen in addition. Dietmar, just move back from For the microphone sure. a bit. No, move oh, yeah. back. Time is okay, though. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I want to ask Simone, uh, how is the total diameter of the fossa ovalis? Means from edge to edge uh, over both uh, defects. So the question is, should you implant two devices or could you use a big device for, for both? But I think it is too distant, both holes. But what is the fossa ovalis diameter in total? Before she comes back and answers that one, if there were two distant holes, what devices would you, or how, how would you suggest dealing with it? Yeah, I, I would uh, measure the, the biggest one at first, and I would uh, close it with uh, two deliverer systems and with uh, uh, two devices, maybe. OK, right at the back there, I can't see you, too. Yeah. Oh, Sha Shaq, uh, let me ask you, you how many of you guys how many of you guys in the audience would do a uh, balloon assessment uh, of these uh, defects? Yeah, that's what I was going to propose. Okay. Do a balloon assess, see how is the small ASD. Maybe just with the one big device, you can close the biggest Okay, so the, it looks ASD like a majority ASD. would do balloon assessment, Carlos. Okay, that was exactly what we've done. Uh, Simone is uh, making some measurements here. 
I think the total length of the interatrial septum is about 40 millimeters. Uh, yeah, 40, yeah, four centimeters. That's the, about the total length, Dietmar. And let me show you what we've done here. Uh, let, let, let's go to the angel pictures, uh, please, guys. Angel pictures. Angiografia. Angiografia. Catch. Uh, okay, we don't have... There you go. Uh, we had some problems, guys, with, uh, with the, the exit port uh, on the other side, do outro lado. So we, we did that. Uh, well, uh, it's not well profiled here. But this is the, you can see here, bring it uh, pra cá, pra cá, is. We inflate the balloon, go again, uh, show the pictures, yeah. So we inflate the balloon, uh, first of all, we crossed uh, the superior ho hole first. We went to the SVC and just rotating clockwise like a transeptal puncture, it fell inside the superior hole. Then we left the, the guide wire in the middle uh, pulmonary vein, left pulmonary vein, we inflate the balloon. And then we had 20, 21 millimeters, uh, this upper hole. Then we went uh, through the inferior hole. We parked the wire in the left upper pulmonary vein, as you can see there. And then we got uh, next, uh, there you go, with both balloons inflated. Uh, we had about the inferior one measured about 10 millimeters and the superior one uh, measured about 20, 21. Let's see those pictures on echo. So put the echo on air, please. Echo, echo. There you go. Let's go back, see, and yeah. show those balloons inflated across the. Okay, just the to show here the 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 uh, catheter crossing the superior hole first, and then uh, we got the first balloon here, and then the inferior um, defect was was crossed, and here we can see. Uh, okay. Yeah. So this is the catheter crossing the, inf the inferior one. And here, 37. The first balloon, the superior, we got here 20.6. And on the inferior one, which is smaller, we got 11.5. Okay, so, um, so you've got uh, um, two measurements that are pretty similar on fluoroscopy as well exactly. as uh, echo. Yeah. Uh, Gianfranco, Agreed, where yeah. are you? Any suggestions? Hi, Carlos. Nice to see you. Hi, Gianfranco. Buonasera. Uh, I should, buonasera. I should go for two ASD device, one 12 and one 22 millimeters device. Okay, there you are. Precise answer for you, Carlos. Simultaneously Great. or at the same time? <laughs> the second one. <laughs> okay, so two okay. devices at the same time, Carlos. Yeah, well, we're going to... Uh, that's what exactly what we've uh, chosen. Uh, in fact, we've chosen a, a 24 millimeter uh, device, Figula device, because the intended uh, procedure here is to close both holes uh, with different devices. Uh, and then we picked up a uh, 24 millimeter Figula device. There's no 22. It goes, uh, there, uh, they come in three millimeters increments. So you have a step up to, uh, from 21 to 24. And because the Figula device is a little bit uh, softer than uh, the Amplatzer device, uh, you can get away with it. And we picked up a 12 millimeter Figula device, which is here. Let me show you guys both devices. They are ready to go. Show my hands. My hands. I'm going to load the device inside the sheet. Minhas mãos, por favor. There you go. This is the 12 uh, uh, a millimeter device. First of all, show the grind here. We are across. Uh, we are. We put uh, the sheets in the same grind. Uh, the mid mid one is a 10 French sheet, and it, it's going to serve for the 12 uh, millimeter device. And the other one is a 12 French sheet, uh, the more lateral, and it's going to serve for the the 24 millimeter device. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to let let show my hands here. I'm going to load the device. It's screwed. Uh, you can feel the unclick. Right. Can you answer a As question while know, you're doing this? Yeah, go ahead. Carlos? 
Yeah. Ask him the question. Hey, um, this is Zaid. How are you? How are you, Zaid, my Good. friend? Hey, uh, was that Good the question? to hear you. No, better, more important question than this. Carlos, this, um, there's a couple of things that, that you that would be of concern here. One is when you look in the four chamber view of the second hole, which is very, very close to the coronary sinus, that means it's very, very close to the mitral valve. So I don't know what your mitral valve rim is. You're gonna put a much larger device in the superior defect, and then you put a smaller device in the inferior defect, which may push on this device even more so. So I, I thought I would suggest to do the upper device first and see how much of this edge hangs into the inferior hole first because the septum that is separating these two defects is very, very thin and, and fluttery and see how deep it goes. If you may not be able to put a 12 millimeter device without impinging upon A on the left side on the mitral valve and B on the right side with the right atrial disc on the coronary sinus itself. Some very important points there, uh, Carlos. Might AV yeah, valve very rim. important point. Yeah. Well, you know what? Uh, you know, I, we had we discussed that before, Shaq, and uh, we we decided to do things the way we do routinely here. And I think it's a very good point, very important. I'm going to deploy the smaller device first and see how it stays in the septum. Then the second device and we can change our strategy accordingly if, uh, uh, if the inferior device protrudes into uh, the mitral vo valve or even into the, uh, coronary, the mouth of the coronary sinus. So I just uh, pushed the inferior uh, device inside the sheath and I just loaded the, the larger device in a, in a short 12 French sheath. Uh, uh, Whilst you're doing that, Carlos, how big was the AV valve rim? It's nine millimeters. I just measured okay. that, so you okay. can show that. Can, can, we, can we turn to the, the echo so that Simone can show uh, those pictures? Echo, please. So this is the, the mitral valve ring here. And let me show live what we have now. So, so Simone, here. can you show this mitral valve ring when you see the coronary sinus in this four chamber view? That will be the true mitral valve ring in that location because the device is going to sit in that location. That's where your right side rim is absent, right? So here we are looking, of course, there is an AV valve rim. It's not a prime MASD. That, but how about when you see the coronary sinus? What's the mitral valve rim dimensions in yeah. when you can see the coronary sinus? Uh, uh, so it's, this is coronary sinus. The thing is that the, here, what they see here is the... We, uh, the station valve here, so you get confused. This is the rim. That, that's my opinion. And if you go down, you see here. That's the station valve. Then. Yeah, yeah, that's the station uh, valve. No, no, Coronary no, no, sinus no, no. is... It, yeah. it crosses the right atrium, yeah. and it ends uh, at the tabasian valve, yeah, which is the here? roof of the coronary sinus, you see? Can you show and me I the think on the left side, you, you, no, have, you, you have the... No, this is not the coronary sinus, Zahid. This is not the coronary sinus. This is the eustachian valve here, crossing. Here, here is coronary sinus. Yeah. Here, here. That's very posterior. Yeah. yeah. That's the coronary sinus so for this sure. is coronary sinus, yeah. and this Look, is the rim. Yeah, you carry can, on, can we Carlos. go back to the, the 3D? Can, can we go back to just to show them uh, the, this large eustachian valve crossing the right atrium okay. and ending uh, at the eustachian, uh, at the tabasian valve, sorry. And I think on the left side, on, uh, near the mitral valve, we have about 10 millimeters uh, rim. And because we are using a 12 millimeter device with uh, uh, about 5 millimeter uh, 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 ratio on the, on the left side, I think we can get away with that. So uh, let's move. See, I'm going to do this live. I'm going to deploy the inferior uh, hole. Let's do that. Oh, that. There we go. Before that, sorry. Sorry. Want me to show that? Yeah, go okay. ahead before we do that. Yeah, just to show here. So this is the, the, the station valve. This is coronary sinus, and this is the inferior hole. So uh, this is the um, a, um, right atrial view. So we, we have some here. I agree that it's not easy. 
But you know, we are not that close. We have room, I guess. We have room to close the, the ASD. Okay, okay I, I so let's move live you now. Carry on, Carlos, I'm deploying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm deploying uh, the left disk. Uh, please, uh, uh, Angel and Echo, picture in picture. There you go. Echo bigger, please. Echo bigger. You can see on Echo, it's kind of close to the mitral valve. I have to take care. It's coming. I'm going to rotate a little bit, open up the waist like that, and see how it comes. There you go. I think I'm ready to deploy. I'm going to do that on Cine so that you guys can see it better. OK, so I'm deploying the, the right disk. There you go. I think it's in the right spot. I think uh, it's kind of far away from the mitral valve. I like that position. What do you think, Shaq and Neil and yeah, Zahid? I think that looks good, but the test will come when you deploy the larger devices yeah, to how much it's so pushed down. So let's do down. that. But I think you're right. yeah. Let me just show the coronary sinus here. You see? It's completely Can you see the free. coronary sinus, guys? It's free. Yes. It's here. We can see it dilated. Why it's dilated? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to deploy. Uh, another quick question deploy. there, Carlos, whilst you're doing that. Is there a left SVC resulting in the coronary sinus dilatation, or is there no, another no, reason? No, 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 no. No, 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 no left SVC. No left SVC. Okay. That's a very good question, because when you have left SVC, the length of your interatrial septum is much shorter than having two devices. It, it can result in, in erosions or even uh, uh, heart block. So now my, my left disc is open, right? I'm going to rotate the sheath clockwise a little bit. You guys uh, heard that in the talk. I'm approaching the interitroceptum. Can you see uh, the aortic valve C? Yeah. There you go. Now I'm going to open up the, I'm going to do that on Cine, do that on Cine. So the waist, and I'm deploying the, the right disc. There you go. So the, there was a little bit of hugging there. Uh, the, the larger device hugged the inferior device, but because they are in different place, uh, plane, sorry, uh, the overlapping, I don't think it's that uh, significant. Let's see on echo C, can you make some comments? Yeah, so here we, s we see the superior one, which is very good position with, with septum, and it's uh, really hugging the uh, inferior one here. Let's move to other angles. And we see here, mitral valve is completely free. Um, we see here, this is perfect. Let's see in this view that we can see the inferior one. That's just too much. This Simone. is the inferior here. Here. Simone. And that's the superior. Sorry. Yeah. Are you guys happy with the 2D pictures? Can we take Simone. some 3D pictures? Do we have time for that? Yeah. Yeah. Simone Neil wants to ask Can you a question. Just again. Who? Simone. It's Neil. Yeah. Hi, Hi Neil. Neil. Could we just see some <laughs> color on the mitral valve, please? Sure. Of course. So. Okay. Thank you, great. Yeah. I don't Can see you any look problem. at the mitral valve right. on 150, roughly, 150 degrees? Because sometimes you get a yeah. different perspective. <laughs> and whilst they're doing that, Zahid, are you comfortable with what we've seen so far? Where are you? I'm sorry. Um, I think it's, um, it looks fine. All the, remember, once you release these devices, they will go more towards the mitral valve a little bit. Mm. Yeah. Because the attention is keeping them higher. Uh, usually, not always. So. I would, but uh, I, I think would. right now it looks okay. It's, it is close to the mitral valve, but it's okay. Yeah, I think. Okay, so you see it quite nicely there, the disc uh, just near that hinge point there. Yeah. Can, can, can we uh, show some live 3D pictures before we release the device? Okay. I'm very happy just with their position. Until. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've often worried about the coronary sinus rim, but in all the times I've implanted, it's always turned out okay. And yeah. I wondered if the audience had a similar experience that I've never had to 
remove a device just for coronary sinus impingement. I'll, I'll come back to that, Abdul. That's a very important point. Nick? I have a question. Do you think that it is possible to uh, interlock these devices so that the left atrial um, side of one device crosses the other and so they, they interlock so not the bigger one embraces the smaller one totally so the overall device shape would be flatter? Do you mean interlock or sandwich? Because right now one of them is sandwiched. I mean interlock. Yeah, it's a this sandwich. Is it's not interdigitating. Yeah. I think he, he means interdigitating. You, yeah, I, I could have done that, but, I, but I, I like the way they are right now. Okay, just an important point about coronary sinus there. Then, uh, Aphrodite, can I just pick on you to say something? Um, yeah, he Shaq picks on me on purpose because I recently had a, uh, a very big ASD, which I hope uh, that I will show at some point in this meeting in a three-year-old child where we placed the device. And uh, two hours, we, I left the device attached because it was a very big hole um, in a small child. Anyhow, uh, there was no hemodynamic consequence, so I let the device go. And two hours later, the patient had LV dysfunction for some reason and uh, went into pulmonary edema. Um, and was very sick, went on ECMO in the cath lab. And uh, uh, when the surgeon went in, the device was well placed. The orifice of the coronary sinus was free. The two discs were across on the, the defect very well. But the surgeon told me that there was compression of the coronary sinus body posteriorly by the waist of the device. Um, I'm not very sure. He took the device out. He closed the ASD surgically, and the LV function never recovered for another three days, really. He carried on an ECMO, and the fourth day, his LV function recovered, and he came Check. off ECMO. Yeah. So Zahid, there you go. That's would you recommend case. to release... <laughs> Pardon? Would you Come. recommend to release the, the, the larger device first release. to see Hands how... Hands up for release. Hands up for release. Yeah. Either Everybody way, Everybody wants you to release. C Carlos is asking, not, not, he's got to release <laughs> them, but he's asking for which but one first, to release first, which one smaller first? or bigger. Which one first? Oh, come on, Carlos. Either, Carlos. Uh, I don't think there's okay, uh, so any... Can I make a this is, this one is one the is larger the, one. You unscrew both partially and then let the small one go first. Let the small one. Uh, so this is, uh, I, I just released the, the superior one. <laughs> uh, Eric, I'm releasing on. the inferior one. See, push, pull, your, pull your probe, see. Eric, go on. Yeah, I, I agree go. with uh, with Vicom. You partially release both devices. We had the very unfortunate circumstance of releasing the smaller device first, and then when we tried to release the larger device, we built up a lot of torque in the cable, yeah. and it kicked the little device off. Yeah. And that's been our only device embolization. So that's now a very good we, tip, Eric. We partially, re we partially release both. So I released the, the larger one first, and then the, it was smooth, it, the device didn't budge. And then the, the, um, the smaller one, let's see uh, the final pictures on Echo before we move forward, Shaq. See, yep. go okay, ahead. Okay, here we see. Echo, Echo please guys, Echo, there you go. So this is the inferior one, mitral valve, free, um, superior, and if we go to the coronary sinus, it's completely free, no problems here. So I think it's a Doppler a in the mitral valve, see? Color Doppler. Sure. Can I so ask a it's working by the way? fine. Yeah, go ahead. Is anyone Is aware any of the coronary leak across sinus the phenomenon in an adult? Like I can understand in a child, the heart is small, the hole is big. Has anyone have any similar experience or know of a case where there's been coronary sinus compression in an adult from an a ASD? Anybody? Yes. Um, I, um, oh. Eric, I looked it up after my case, and there was there's only one case described in an adult who actually had partial obstruction of the coronary sinus orifice and came back uh, three weeks later with LV dysfunction too. That's the only case I found in, in the literature. Okay. Anybody else in the audience with coronary sinus in an adult? Coronary, not Can coronary you, sinus. Just a coronary shack. I mean, you know, when they put in bivy pacing leads, you yeah. know, it's not very often. You know, every now and then they either dissect the coronary sinus or it gets blocked. It rarely produces any major issues in adults, to be honest. Right, okay. All right. Okay, Carlos, um, uh, or Simone, rather. Yeah, 3D pictures. Simone ready to has much it. better pictures than me. Carlos? Yeah, so we have here, um, in this picture here, you see, this is the mitral valve leaflet, inferior, div uh, inferior device, superior device. So we see that no problems, devices are very well 
positioned. Okay. And so, Carlos okay. Simone? Yes. Wonderful demonstration yep. of a slightly complex uh, ASD. Thank you very much, and we'll see you. Thank you, Chad. Uh, see you later. Bye-bye. Thanks okay, a lot. Okay, see you bye later bye. on. Thank you.